We're gonna take you through a lot of details on this bike, but first we're gonna give you the three word bike review. Mega 290 is, sure, straight works. Giga 27 factory is play or plow. Guys, this is my bike. <laughs> hey, this is Robert Beaupre here for Vital MTB. Uh, we are bringing you a comparison today between two bikes. On this side, we have the Nukeproof Mega 290 RS Carbon. And on this side, we have the Giga 275 Factory Carbon. These are two bikes that are aiming to get at the same purpose, a very heavy hitting enduro riding experiences, but taking slightly different formulas to get there. Today we're going to break down some of the differences between these bikes and try to help you make a decision if you're choosing between these two rigs. In person, both the Mega and Giga are beautifully built machines. Thoughtful touches like robust chain slap guards, extensive clear frame protection, and torque specifications printed directly on the pivots add to the elegance. Yeah, so both of these bikes come with very competitive and well-spec suspension. Um, you have the RockShox Z fork and Super Deluxe Ultimate Rear Shock on the Mega. Um, over here on the new proof uh, Giga, you have the Fox 38 up front, as well as a Float XT shock. Both of these suspension designs are pretty fantastic, honestly. The components are really well mated to the frame and linkage design for each model. However, if I had to pick one as a winner, I think the new Giga suspension design and the new Fox components are a great match. Um, and the reason I say that is because they're able to both plow through rough terrain and maintain great traction, but when the trail gets bonus hits, opportunities for lofting, uh, the bike really comes to life. It's a very poppy bike, it's a very playful bike, which is something you wouldn't expect from a 180 millimeter travel bike. The Mega is not deficient necessarily in this regard, but I was really struck by the ability of the Giga to, to both pop and to plow. So as far as the rest of the specs on these bikes go, um, both very solid specs, but there are some clear winners in certain categories. If we're talking about brakes here, the Code RSC brakes on the Mega are pretty solid. However, I absolutely loved the Shimano XTs on the Giga. Mountains more stopping power than these particular codes. Um, and I felt a decent amount of modulation. Uh, for me, the power was just a complete game changer when I hopped on the Giga versus the Mega. So I'm giving that category to the Giga. Um, similarly, on the seat post, you have a reverb on the Mega and you have the, the bike yoke dropper on the Giga. Um, again, no contest. We had two failures on the Mega 290. We had zero failures on the bike yoke, and it was just a peerless performer throughout the test. Never missed a beat. Um, yeah, it was fantastic. Similarly, there were some categories that were closer. Um, you know, in terms of drivetrain, the Giga brings an XT drivetrain throughout. The Mega has a SRAM Eagle XO setup. Both excellent drivetrains. Hard to pick between these, but if I had to give a nod, I might give it to the SRAM Eagle X01 setup. Um, just very crisp shifting, uh, everything fell to hand and feels great. The XT setup didn't do anything wrong per se, but a little bit more noise and maybe a slightly more agricultural feel. So in that category, I give to the Mega. Wheels and tires, uh, same tires on these. Um, good tires, I noticed a little bit of instability at lower pressures, but overall pretty solid for our terrain around here. Um, similar to the wheels, um, we have the Mavic wheel setup over here on the Mega. Um, didn't miss a beat, looks awesome, great wheel set. Um, but similarly, the DT Swiss 1700 wheel set didn't exhibit any flaws either. Both rims are running true, the spokes stay tight. Um, the one exception there is that on our last ride on this Giga, we started to get some hub play in the DT Swiss hub. Overall, I have to give the nod to the Mega 290 overall in the wheel category based on the Giga's hub failure. Near the end of our testing period, we began to notice a weird bit of play in this rear hub. When I went to go ahead and put power down out of straightaway, out of corners on straightaways, uh, generally high speed, um, you know, hard pedaling situations, the hub was clanging around quite a bit and not getting a positive engagement. Elsewhere, there's some nice touches on the Mega 290. It has a set of carbon handlebars. You know, the descendant cranks were great. But yeah, overall, both really solid builds. Both builds that I think were specced by people who spent time in the saddle and great value for the money as well. So let's talk about some of the shortcomings we face with these bikes. 
The Reverb 175 gave us issues pretty much out of the gate. It had to be serviced after a short period of time in Vital's possession. We serviced it, hoped it was fixed. It wasn't. It had to be replaced with a warranty one. Um, you know, failures happen on C-Post. It's understandable. However, this was a very short amount of time. It's something that you're going to be definitely disappointed by if you're buying a $6,000 bike. Elsewhere, it's not completely fair to put these code RSC brakes on the weakness list. However, when you compare them to Shimano's XT units, the power is just not there. Um, I know some folks value modulation over outright power, but I gotta say, every time I jumped on the Giga, I really enjoyed the XTs and the additional stopping power they brought. It took a long time to get used to the less than stopping power on the codes, and for that reason, I viewed this as a weakness of the Mega. In terms of build issues with the Giga, there were a couple of things. Um, we had a little bit of sponginess on this front brake, this front XT brake. Um, seemed a bit odd. XTs are often bled very well out of the box. Um, but after a couple of rides, I began to notice a little bit of brake fluid seeping from this cap, pulled it back, and sure enough, the nut that attaches the hose to the lever body was a little bit loose. Snugged it down, threw a bleed on it. It's been trouble-free ever since. Lastly, um, and this is, uh, this is a trivial one, uh, oftentimes upon climbing, there was an odd squishing noise from the Fox rear shock, I believe. It wasn't maddening exactly, but it's definitely noticeable and it was really hard to track down. So if you're bothered by minor noises on your bike, um, you might be, want to be prepared to um, investigate that sort of thing if you find yourself on a Giga, um, or perhaps this is a one-off, we don't know. Um, but yeah, mild annoyance more so than a major failure, however. So in terms of climbing ability, both of these bikes climbs really well for a bike of its travel. Not a lot of suspension bob on either one of these. I mean, you feel the weight, but it's an enduro bike. It's what these bikes are made for. If you go lighter, you're going to compromise the descending. If I had to pick a winner in the ascending category, I might give it actually to the Giga, which is counterintuitive because, you know, 29ers oftentimes sort of maximize rolling speed in, uh, you know, in various situations. But the combination of this linkage design with the Fox suspension provided a suspension platform that was pretty unreal. I would descend on this bike and then later start a climb and check the switch to see if it was on. It was not on. Just a very firm platform. The bike just scrambled up hills for a bike of its side. Very enjoyable to ride and to climb with. In terms of playfulness, these are two relatively different bikes. Um, they both respond to requests to get off the ground pretty well, but there's really an advantage with this Giga 275 here. It lifts off the ground exceedingly easily. Um, if you need pop for getting over a ledge or skying a new jump that's a little bit long and you have a little too little speed for, the Giga is an absolute delight. It'll, it'll definitely put a smile on your face when it comes time to get your wheels off the ground. The Mega 290, not a bad bike in this regard, but when you ride them back to back, you're definitely going to notice a lot of the pop factor on the Giga 275. So in many ways, cornering is kind of a draw. If you're looking to push the envelope on like really loose, weird terrain and, and traction is at a premium, I think the 290 is a really, really good choice. However, when you get into turns where they're tight and swoopy and invite you to sort of throw the bike around a little bit. It's hard to beat the Giga. Um, it's a really, really fun bike when you get into anything that's, that's tight and demands that type of agility that a 27.5 bike tends to shine with. Both excellent corners um, and you're going to sort of prefer one bike over the other depending on the course you're riding. Um, but it's really too close to call in most respects. In terms of overall descending prowess, um, both of these bikes are, are undoubtedly weapons. The Mega 290 is, again, it's stuck to the ground and it tracks in a way that really inspires you to hold on the throttle probably longer than you would on a lot of other bikes. And the nice thing about it is it also turns down the volume in doing so. When timing various sections of trail on this bike, I'd often go for you know, what I thought was a fair to moderate pace and then look at the time later and find out that it was actually quite fast. Uh, it's a bike that's deceitful in that respect and it's a great thing, um, particularly if you're, you're oriented toward races. The Mega 275 was typically only a hair behind and when I compared times between these two bikes, if you're thinking about it from a race aspect, I mean, it was, we're talking whiskers here. There was not a lot of difference between these bikes in most settings. However, I mean, if I really thought about it, the times I was turning on the 275 
oftentimes felt just a hair more on the edge than on the 290. Again, the 290 turns down the volume, um, and this is particularly helpful if you've got buddies who are way faster than you and you're barely hanging on to keep up. Um, the 290 is going to have some benefits that you're going to want to consider. Um, you know, conversely, if your buddies are into party laps and want to descend in a way that's, that's freewheeling and having a good time, uh, the Giga T75 has a lot to offer. Um, and if you're somewhere in between those, you're going to have to weigh those categories for yourself. Um, personally, though, for me, I really enjoyed the descending experience on the Giga 275. Okay, so everything said, how do you choose between these two bikes? In my mind, there are very specific personas that are going to fit well with each of these bikes. And it really depends on who you are and how you view yourself. Um, if you want to get the Mega, I think it makes a lot of sense. If, if you're the racer type who really only wants to climb top podiums and take KOM titles and become a GPS racing legend, grab yourself a Mega. If you're riding with friends who are way faster than you and take you in way hairier terrain than you're really comfortable in, um, and you need a little extra bit of security from, from these uh, larger wheels, grab yourself a Mega. If you are not particularly interested in shrouping or whipping, or those things are just not high on your to-do list on a given ride, but you still want to ride terrain that's heavy and progressive, grab yourself a Mega. Um, it's going to work great for all those use cases for that type of rider. Okay, so who is the Giga for? I think the Giga is for the rider who appreciates the ability to cut under his buddies on the inside of a turn at a moment's notice. Uh, I think the Giga is a fantastic bike if you want to be part of the resistance against the industry's march toward 29-inch wheels for pretty much every model. Um, but most importantly, I think the Giga is a fantastic bike if outright speed isn't your only marker of riding prowess. If you appreciate the ability to take creative lines, if you appreciate the ability to make shapes on jumps, if you appreciate the ability to take lines that, you know, pure racer types might not be interested in for the sake of fun, for the sake of creativity, um, any of those things, this is where a Giga 275 comes to life. And don't get me wrong, it's still an extremely, extremely fast bike. And if you want to race a 275, you should definitely race a 275 because again, the time differences between these bikes is, is marginal in virtually every, every instance I tested it. But the nice thing about the Giga is that it also gives you the option for those party laps, for that playful riding. Um, which to me is very, very valuable and, and something worth considering. So which of these bikes is better? I think that's a loaded question. There's a lot of contingencies there that are going to impact how much fun and how fast you go on each one of these bikes. Um, so you're going to have to make some of these decisions for yourself. However, you should watch out for us on those insides. This is Robert Bopre for Vital MCB. Good night.